Hi. You know, sometimes we just need to get away. I learned that one of the best ways is in an RV. You know, if you're like me and you like to boondock, after two or three days your battery power is pretty much shot. Especially if you like to watch a movie or two, use the lights, and especially with that power hogging furnace. If you're not willing to run your generator all day, you're in trouble. A few months ago I started hearing about friends of mine that were using solar power to keep their batteries charged and I thought, wow, that's really intriguing. This video is to teach you much of what I've learned and also to let you watch me as I add a solar power system to my old fifth wheel. You know, on a basic level, all you need is a solar panel and batteries. If you don't want to destroy those batteries, however, you need to put what's called a charge controller between the two of them. Now, as you plan, the other thing you want to look at is do you want a portable system or are you going to do like I'm going to show you and put uh, one permanently on the roof? There are kits available, but I decided to go completely a la carte. Even with the kits, you're going to find that you have to make visits to your local Home Depot and probably some online sites for parts to connect the components and to hold them into place. Speaking of parts, what is it that you really need? Well, you already have the battery bank, and the next, next most important and probably most expensive part is your solar panel. The one I'm going to use is 250 watts, and it cost me $374. Some people bank them together. I've heard if you do that, you need to use the same type for all of them. Next is in, in importance is the charge controller and also in the cost. There are two types. There's the PWM and there's the MPPT. I decided to go with the MPPT, but you need to do your research online before you start to buy or build your system. In addition, you're going to need screws, brackets, wires, caulking, etc. to put all of that working system together. With the panel, the charge controller, and the connecting, holding, and leak proofing parts, I'm into this thing about $650. Well, let's grab our tools and get started. Here you're seeing the front part of the trailer, and I decided to bring up the box that came from the uh, solar panel itself and try it on the real estate and see how it worked out. I've already tested it, but this is where I'm going to put it. Uh, an important part of where you locate it sometimes is how are you going to get the power down from the solar panel into the, into the trailer and into the right part of the trailer. I'm actually going to use this uh, vent that comes up from uh, one of the one of the water storage tanks and send it down through there. So it makes it kind of handy and I don't have to drill another hole in the roof. You may be lucky and not have to drill holes in the aluminum frame around your solar panel, but in my particular instance, I need to. And so I've marked the holes, measured very carefully and marked the holes. What's going to happen is you're going to put these Z brackets, or as you might call them overseas, Z brackets. They're going to go on the edge like this and then uh, drill into the uh, roof of your RV over here. So let's go ahead and drill one of those holes. Now before I drill a hole, of course I want to have my safety glasses on, and also I'm going to use a piece of wood underneath because I don't want to accidentally drill into the uh, panel, into the back of the panel. Let's go ahead and get that done. See how nicely that worked where it didn't, uh, didn't go on down when it broke through. To apply the, the little Z bracket or Z bracket that we talked about before, you're going to take the, the bolt and nuts that come with it. Now there isn't one to attach it into the top of the trailer, but there is one to put here. Now notice that this has that little bit of a groove to it, so it bites into the aluminum. And then here we have a regular washer and a lock washer to really secure it down. So stick that up through there. There we go. 
So we'll line those up. Bring that in. Now we do not want these babies coming off while we're driving down the road at 70 miles an hour, do we? So we're going to cinch it down really good. Mm. All right. So we've got all eight of those on now, as you can see. Now you may not need eight, depending on the size of your particular solar panel. But I decided I wanted eight for what I was doing. And now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this cardboard cover that came with it stays on it while we put it up on the, the roof. One, for protection of the uh, front of our pole, uh, solar panel. And two, because we don't want them sending a charge out of this yet. So we're going to protect it. So I'll just wrap a little bit of tape on here to hold it on, nothing very fancy, and uh, get it ready to be put up on the roof. Well, as you can see, I now have the solar panel up here, and we're ready to start mounting it to the deck. Uh, I'm using these large screws to put them down, and I'll show you a little more detail on that. These say no pre-drilling required. I don't believe in that. Uh, I don't want to take any chances in splitting anything, so I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill the holes where I've marked them here. One of the things that we definitely don't like is leaks, and so we're going to really do a good job on getting uh, some good caulk on here, something that's weather resistant for many, many years and stay soft and all that. We're going to start by putting it even underneath each of these where we drilled the holes. Go ahead and drive some of these in there. Now I've still got to do the other side so I'm not going to drive them in too far but hold them into place and then I'll come back and I've gone ahead and attached down the other side so now all I need to do is finish off this side and as I like to say caulk the crap out of it because I again do not want leaks and since nobody ever comes up here doesn't matter so much what it looks like. Well, I think I told you before that uh, we're going to use this vent cap, this vent, uh, to to send the wires down. Now, I'm getting quite a bit of wind, so I'm hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to hear me. We're going to send the wires down through here. One of the advantages of using the vent cap is if we do get some kind of a leak, so what? Uh, it goes into a wastewater tank and no big deal. And inside the vent, of course, is nothing but air. So I've checked with a couple of plumbers and both of them said no problem. They didn't see any issues with it at all. So I'm going to drill a hole in the side here, right about here, to give me a place to put that in. Now incidentally, I made sure that I put the wire source up here on this end so that I'd have easy access to the wiring from there and then this is what's going down. So I'm going to go ahead and start to feed that down into that hole. By the way, I put a piece of tape on this wire so that when I get to the seven foot Mark because that's how far it's going down before I have the hole to bring it out I'll know where to stop and then I'll just have the very end of the wire there to to pull out uh, on that end. I couldn't get in uh, with the camera and all that kind of thing so I just thought I would show you an image of how it comes out of the vent pipe down below goes across on the beam and then out into the battery compartment. Okay, 
So I have mounted my controller inside the battery box, which is not a safe thing to do if your battery box is enclosed. You can't see it here, but this one is not enclosed. It is open at the bottom. So I brought the wires in. I'm ready to go. I've marked this wire as the positive wire. This wire is not marked, so it's the negative wire, and I'm going to connect those up. Now, they are not connected up above. If they were, I'd be real dangerous here touching things around inside this battery box. They are definitely not connected up above. Another thing that I've been told by the electricians is to put just a little bit of this uh, uh, electrical grease on there just to make a better contact. So, put a little grease on there, and then uh, put the positive up in the positive hole tighten it down and obviously the same thing with the negative well I'm getting ready to hook up the wiring from the controller to the battery the instructions say to put an inline fuse in though they didn't say what size uh, I went online to get help on what size to use. End up using a 20 amp because that's what the amperage on my particular charge controller is. Got lots of help with calculations that I didn't understand and all kinds of things. Uh, a couple or three people said, well, they didn't put a fuse in theirs and they got by okay. I'm guessing that they uh, don't wear their seat belt and haven't been in an accident either. But anyway, we're going to put this in line. It says don't put the fuse in yet. Just, just get it connected up. So I'm getting ready to connect up the controller to the battery. You may have seen that gray wire that was down below. And uh, what that gray wire was for that was coming up is to connect up this remote monitor or remote meter so that I can see what's going on without having to go down to the battery compartment. Well, I've double and triple checked all the polarities to make sure my pluses are to my pluses and my minuses are to my minuses. Connected them up to the battery. I'm ready to go. The only thing I haven't done is connect up the solar panel itself. The uh, indicator, you can't see it from here, but to the uh, charge controller is indicating that the battery is going to it and fine. It's given me a green light. So we're happy campers. Next step is to hook up the solar panel itself and see where we go from there. Well, this is getting pretty doggone exciting because we are ready to turn on the juice. There's a little thing on here that says do not connect or disconnect under load. So that's why the cover is still on here. So, we've got the wires, we're going to do the connect. Make sure that they snap into place. And then I'm going to remove the cover. Well, that's a pretty exciting image because it says everything seems to be working in order. We're getting sun to the power, we're getting, uh, uh, or sun to the panel, and we're getting uh, 27 volts out of it. Char battery looks like it's not fully charged, but it is charging. And so we'll watch and see what happens, but I'm excited. Well, as you saw, We've got a wrap. Here's the uh, solar panel all uncovered. You saw the, the way the uh, meters were reading. Everything's in good shape. We're ready to head out camping. Uh, we'll see what happens on the first couple of trips and boondocks we take from here. Thanks for watching. I look forward to your comments.